This is Patito's gang. Today we're going to be looking at a subject that's been with us right from ages. Not necessarily um, limited to Nigeria, but we know for sure Nigeria has had more than its fair share of the big C, and that is corruption. Corruption in high and low places, corruption in government, corruption with how we are governed. Corruption regards our cradle to grave. Starts from when we are coming to this world, so many things happen in between. And then when we even say our final bye, and you are not able to rest in peace because somebody or some persons have decided to disturb the spirit of the dead. Corruption. One of our leaders made the point, that if we don't kill corruption, corruption will kill us. I have on the panel to have a critical look at this. This subject of corrup corruption. Are we winning the war? Is it selective? Are we making the right jives? Are we leading by example such that those who are behind us are saying that um, it's different? Corruption. My barrister. Yes, sir. We are less corrupt now, obviously. Yes, I think so. You know, if you ask me, it has. All, I wonder why we always make a big hue about corruption. Everywhere in the world, there are corruption. Everywhere. Now, my fear is using corruption as a stepping step as a stepping tool to deal with people you don't like. Well, that's the, the selective. Aspect yes. of corruption, which now, is in service corruption. Now, when, when I say this, it might sound as if I am supporting corruption. Nobody su support corruption. Corruption kills a society. My point is that we should get in the system of governance than thinking about corruption. In the United States, if you ask me, they are more corrupt than we are in this country. But the fact that is not being projected the way we project it here, then it looks as if they are less corrupt. The way to avoid corruption is to put a system in place. And regardless of how high you are placed, that system, you are under that system. Ike, you've just parroted um, um, Jerry Rollins of Ghana, who actually made the statement that by virtue of the institutions, rules, and regulations that, quoting him, we have put in Ghana, even if the devil came calling, he will not be able to get away with it. Mm. I'm very, very sure many, many, many people might slightly differ okay. from, from, from your perspective. Let me, let, let me, let me hear Funke. I know Funke hates corruption with a passion. I'll tell you what my view of corruption is. Corruption is that you're asked to construct a road and you did a uh, haphazard job and there are portals in no time and people are running into those portals and dying from accidents. Corruption is that you've been asked to supply equipment to a hospital and you have taken half the money or maybe even more than half the money and you have supplied uh, less than less quality equipment and people are dying out of it. Including fake drugs. Including fake drugs. And we remember our icon, you know, for that, Dora, Dora Pili. Yes. Corruption kills us in many ways. I mean, we've heard that we are fantastically, fantastically corrupt as a people, yet... It is with the active connivance of the Western world. The professionals will help you to stash the funds. And then when you talk about selective um, persecution or selective um, treatment of those who are corrupt, are we really intentional about it? Are we, are we winning? You ask that question. Are we truly winning? Because more people are dying out from the fallout of corruption. So when should the people begin to take those in government more seriously about the fight against corruption? If you jail a person for stealing a, a, a foul, 
But then you let the somebody who's, who, who embezzled billions from pensions, fund and whatever to walk away. Then I, I do not have faith in your... That, um, that goes back to talk about the system that, that I have yeah. just mentioned about. Integrity. Yes. It, the integrity in of the, the capacity law. for you to do things right at all times without being seen. So no. the judiciary for no, me... I, I totally um, back from K. I have relatives, aunties, uncles who work in civil, who are civil servants, who haven't been paid their wages, sometimes eight months. And when they get paid, it's half of a month's wages. So for a lot of us Nigerians who live in the UK, we're sending money to pay school fees that our, our aunties and uncles cannot pay. So that's corruption because government schools should be free. Anywhere in the world that you go to, comprehensive and government schools were always free. So from my, from my take, corruption in Nigeria, it breaks my heart. I hate to even say to people, let me give you an example. I love saying I'm Nigerian. And when I say, they say, you're Nigerian. There's this shock that Nigerians can't be like this, can't be honest because of the media. But also, we ourselves talk about corruption so much that it spreads outside. Or people will get emails. Oh, did you get that email from the Nigerian prince asking you to give your bank details? So th there's all these things that, as a British Nigerian, it doesn't look good. And then you come here, and just to get to this office now, to this studio, unfinished buildings. So many unfinished buildings because people have eaten money. Unfinished roads. So it's easy to say put systems in place. However, it starts from the top down. If your governor has taken money and then your palm set can't pay his people, then the people can't pay their staff, then that's how corruption starts. It's a way... It, it, it now goes on and on. Sorry, just map, as well. my, argument, my argument is very simple. Since 1960, ever since we got our independence, if you recall, there has always been People that want to take over the government, people that want to hijack the government, they cite corruption. So there's nothing we can say here today that is new. We all know that Nigerians, by their way of lives, are corrupt. That one is there. We all know that. It's so sad. Which is so sad. But excuse me, I'm, co I'm coming up with something. You see, I'm somebody that likes to look at cup half full than half empty. The truth of the matter is, we have cited the example in Europe and America and other places. The difference is the way you project yourself out there. I'm saying that, and I go back to it again. The only way we can curb this word corruption, even though we can't eliminate it, is to put system in place. And when you put system in place, one of the systems you put in place is how do you elect your leaders? What, are the, what is the system of electing your leaders? Another way to curb corruption is to put competent people in the right places. Forget about nepotism. But so long as you are on the top and you are surrounded by your family members and you are there shouting corruption, corruption. I'm not going to buy it because it doesn't exist. What I do know exists is that, yes, things are not functioning the way it's supposed to function. This is an aberration. No country ever operates in this kind of system that survives it. Absolutely no doubt about it, about structures. Um, I disagree with you slightly, um, Ike. Uh, Situations, and I want to talk up from the governance perspective now, um, as an accountant's perspective, when you have collusion, in other words, if two or three people that are supposed to be manning institutions independently are supposed to be acting as discipline, what we call discipline in controls over ensuring that the commonwealth is preserved, now collude. When they collude, they take the commonwealth, then go share it outside. Typical example is the minor and the pension fraud. Minor was the face 
of the pension and people were dying in droves. And just like you see um, the pocket of corruption on our streets, you take it from the guy who's supposed to be controlling traffic, who has to make some returns back to somebody who's in the office, who has to make a return back. It's happened so, so many times. Okay, culture. has there been a government in place so in Nigeria culture. that have not been accused of corruption? It is getting has worse. Has there been anywhere? The only problem about it is so it's that's getting the point. Is, is not only getting worse, and I agree with you, corruption. Even with the fight against corruption, doesn't look like we're winning anything. No, we're not. Because we're talking from both sides. Of the situation, the that's situation, that's that's situation that I hear again about selective corruption is that why? Okay, this person is corrupt because it's from my end. Leave him. Go look for some other persons. Does that help us? We've seen situations where in some enclaves, some people say, yes, we know he's stolen, but we're still going to re-elect him. He's still going to get back. The attitude is awful. There is nowhere in the world that I see situations that even countries that are gone, the God got away. Okay? Like Rwanda. From the throes of nothing, in fact, minus in the, on the integer. They have come back, agree, put the structures in place, and then begin to put the right feet, square pegs, in round. The nepotism that you talked about is unfortunate. Nobody in Nigeria is happy about the way we are set up. Let's just hear what our people will say, and I'll get back to you immediately after we come back. We shall be back. Let's hear what the Holoi Poloi would say about this subject of corruption. When the government is saying that way, it will be reduced. The number of people that are just striving to get there. Corruption in our country, Nigeria, I think the old generation have failed the, the nation. Because when Jonathan was there, we say that his government is corrupt, but now we saw corruption, nobody is even complaining. We now see corruption walking on the street of Nigeria, and nobody is complaining. People are eating their neighbors in name of finding three square meals. We don't even see one meal, let alone three square meals. So, government have failed the nation. The children are no longer going to school because they have, their parents have lost their job and lost their business. Corruption is a canker worm that can be taken care of. Corruption has eaten deep into our, our economic system. And I'm glad that the government has made it a point of duty to handle that. I hope you handle it in your space as well. We are back. Just listen to our people on the streets. They've had that fear of what corruption has been doing, is doing, hopefully, will be reduced going forward. Because when you look at all the SDG goals, 17 of them, why have we not been able to attain corruption? Statistics have just been released that 675 billion, I repeat that, 675 billion cash was paid in bribes in the year 2019. 675 billion, in, in just cash alone. Is that not killing? If you look at that as a percentage of our overall GDP, it's getting to a bit of a materiality, isn't it? The truth of the matter is this. In order for us to start changing things, begin to do things that other people would say, you know, this country is changing. It means we have to start from the grassroots. Well, and not, that well, starting from united. the grassroots. We're not united. The, the, there you go. It's part of what I'm saying. You see, I said Nigeria is an orphan before, but people don't understand. There's something that brings these guys together. And we cannot be fooled by them any longer. It is class interest. It is, okay. Yes. It is class interest. When it, it comes to it, corruption, yeah. all, the, all the women will line up behind the person that can feather their, their yes. cap. I, I agree with you on that. I am saying we must now begin 
to celebrate character. Yes. We must all line up and go to the polls, go and vote people that have capacity. The objective is to get good governance. And the law must be such that it punishes in clear terms to send clear the signal yep. that corruption cannot pay. Corruption is also a situation where, ladies, gentlemen, and our listeners, situations where we sent our children to school and our children have done quite well. And then in the corporate world, they come out, they cannot get jobs. Okay, all right, the environment is bad. Do you only but get jobs is, if you study but abroad? In the, same, in the same corporate environment, the corporates now support some initiatives. People go, go naked and stuff like that. And these children that have studied so hard come out and begin to see these deviants as making it before them. We are corrupting the system. Let me quickly make a point here now. Some time back, I think two years back, thereabout, we heard a story of Ochanya. Ochanya died because she was abused within the home she, she was taken to. But I tell people and I tell as many journalists that I can when I facilitate that, Ochanya died of corruption because there were no good roads to the only school where she could have attended. Yep. And so because the, the parents so badly wanted her to be educated, they plucked her from under their care and took her to another place where she could access education. Right. Imagine at the local level if there was good roads yes. to get to the, the school in the next school. Why, 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 why was that road not there? Why was that road not there? Okay, I just wanted, corruption. I just wanted Somebody to Somebody took that money. Okay, okay, yeah, that I road has been put thing. in a budget a couple of times and it's exactly. going to the wrong pocket. I just want to say something, please. Yes. See, we, we have to be focused on what we are, the subject we are talking about. And the subject borders on corruption. It's not that we don't have examples of countries that have come out of corrupt tendencies and become a, a, a shining armor in the society today. Take just our next nice neighbor here, Ghana. In the 80s, I'm too old to know what happened then. We are the one that said Ghana must go. One of the reasons why we say Ghana must go was because we see them as people who, first of all, we are corrupt in a very they little way. Away. They ran away. We, we also saw them then as people who are taking our little jobs here and there. So, but today, Ghana, as we speak, you cannot talk about Ghana. You talk about corruption. You know what? They, you know. You know why that narrative was changed? Because there was a strong man that put a strong institution in place. So everybody, and that's where I go back to. I'm a legal person, so I cannot talk outside the realm of the law. There has to be 